Kmart Get Ready has Calaboom events brings to you. Wall Festival 2023. Shake my tip best weekend. It all goes down on Saturday, August 5th at the Festival Village. Featuring the return of the King of Soka, Masha Montano. Masha Montano. Along with the Queen of Dance Hall, Spice. Also on stage, King J, Magic X, the Club Creator DJ Outcast, DJ Big Boss, and DJ King Kevin. Get your tickets now on the K-Band app, the Calibum Headquarters, Tech Hub, Levi's and Marigold, Digicel and Hope Estate, Exclusive Clothing and Marigold, and the Promo Car. But wait, right after this mega concert, we go straight into Juve at 4 a.m. So don't wait. Get your splash kits now. You must have your shirts to get your drink and access to the Juve after party. Get your tickets now and make sure you're there. It's Wally. Festival 2023. St. Martin Best Weekend. Powered by the San Martin Tourism Office. Dimico. Air Caribe. The St. Martin Tourist Bureau. Digi Selling Hope Estate. And Hennessy. A Bajan and a Trinidadian dying with starvation. The Bajan say, Look, Trini, now we make a cook. I put the rice, you going to put the meat. Then we going both have something to eat. But when the pot was nearly to done, the Bajan decided to pull a fast one. He said, Trini, I'm a bomb for Bajan. I don't like to fight. But when come to the occasion, man, I stick for more right. You put in a 12 cents meat bone, you was on a lice. I going to give you a word of advice, get your meat out my rice. Trini got in a big rage, what wrong with you beige? I gonna tell you flat, bitch, I ain't taking that. When we were shopping, we both agreed. The food will be cooked and share equally. I put my last penny in this meat, and I ain't moving until I eat. Bitch, Trini, I'm a born barbarian. I don't like to fight. But when come to the occasion, man, I die for my right. You put in a 10 cents meat bowl, you think that is nice? Well, don't make me have to tell you twice. Check your meat out, my rice. Welcome to the Late Night Show. Hope everything is okay. Hope everything is all right. It's all about um, the summer tour. We are uh, moving. We are going places. You never where. You never know where we're going to end up. We are in uh, Soccer Garden at the headquarters of um, USM candidate, Mr. Uh, Julian uh, Rolox Jr. All right. Um, of course, we're going to talk to him. Of course, we're going to ask him some questions about, you know, the Bacchanal um, losing the court case, what he thinks about it. Um, the Minister of um, Bromi mentioned it in the press briefing. And also his giveaway, uh, school supplies for the youngsters of St. Martin going back to school this upcoming Sunday in Belvedere. All right. So we have a lot in store. Today is going to be a good show. Um, so far, what's happening, you know, for politics, uh, we started a new poll and we are checking the popularity of the Prime Minister. Um, we will be sending out the link um, later today. And if it's out, vote, please. Um, we just want to hear from you um, what you think about the Prime Minister. It's not going to be an opinion thing where you just write what you think. But whether she's doing a good job, bad job, or we should change to another Prime Minister. Okay, so that's the poll, the late night poll for next week. Monday, we will be giving you the results. It is hot. I need some juice. I gotta look for a juice box. Welcome to the late night show. We have a good one for you. Let's begin. Of course, we continue our um, program and we are joined with the one and only uh, Mr. Rolox Jr. Junior Rolox Jr. 
correct, correct. Yeah, I just came to correct. Correct. You know, listen. Correct, correct, correct. I was correct. there for your father time, so it would be hard yeah, for me. Yeah, it would yeah, be hard yeah. for me. But I know, I know, I know. I, I, know. I got to get used to this. Yes, yes, yes. No, um, I'm drinking my juice box. Um, please excuse me. <laughs> it's hot out there. Um, of course, we got to talk about um, this school giveaway, this school supply giveaway that you're doing for the kids. Um, I believe it's on, on Sunday coming. Sunday, it's Sunday coming. Already, boy. Look at the time. Flies. Yeah, it flies, it flies, it flies. And yes. Firstly, Andrew, thank you for having me once again with you. Always. You know, I appreciate it, uh, being there with you. I've been, I've been there a few times already. So I appreciate the, the, the opportunity on your show. Um, you forget to tell the folks where you is right now. Yeah, yeah but the headquarters. Yeah. Are the headquarters. Yeah, you see, that's why I see the big yeah, poster. Yeah. You know, nobody got to run us. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. USM's <laughs> um, Tardy um, Julian Rolox headquarters in Soccer Garden. That's the most to say coming from there. Hey, listen, summer tour, we're going everywhere. So we had to come to him this time. We're not doing studio for the summer. So we come to you. Definitely. And um, over here is where we're doing the, the computer sessions. So, yeah. Yes. How's that going, by the way? Oh, really good, bro. It's going yeah. really good. Um, I, I believe it's really necessary in the community and especially the vulnerable communities. When I say vulnerable, you know, some that in the yeah. water, cold day. What are some of the so, what are some of the things? I always curious. So like when people come to a, a computer class and things like that and they want to learn more about technology, what are some of the basic things that um, you know the audience would be surprised that people uh, don't know about? Well I'm gonna have a video coming out. Um, but most of the stuff is uh, Excel, you know, like people want to learn about Excel, Word. Um, they want to learn of uh, people come here and they want to make their own posters. Maybe they have a barbecue. Uh, they want to make their own poster of the barbecues or a car wash, you know, and they, they come here and they, we had them to set up the little poster and then they learn and then they go home and they do it on their own. Mm. You know, we had folks also uh, applying for jobs right here. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. You could be surprised, Andrew. People from St. Martin, when I say from St. Martin, with a Dutch passport, um, don't know what's a CV, don't know what's a resume. Uh, that is, uh, it's incredible, you know. But, you know, we live here, and that's why I say the vulnerable people that really need the attention. And uh, we're here to help them and, and help them to develop, of course, on the computer. As you can see, the space is limited. Yeah. So I, I bring in people and sometimes after two, three weeks, we up somebody follow, then I bring in them again. Or I hold a group for at least a month, twice a week, two hours. So it's four hours for the week. And um, after the month, you bring in another another group. So that's basically what we do. So even like, well, because most of the, 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 the services are online now. So you can imagine like a GB, you, you could... Yeah, all of that too, you can, all of that you can learn, but a lot of people is all very interested, but as a lot of seniors, yeah, but a lot of people are interested in learning Excel, like how to function with the Excel, um, how, how does it work, because they want to, they want to learn, no? They want to learn because you, you can do your own accounting at home and certain stuff like that, maybe type a letter, type a CV, send for somebody, or if you got to send a letter to someone, because on your phone is still a little bit different. Yeah, yeah, you know? definitely, it's, it's definitely. a little bit different, so... Um, that is going really good. So on the other hand, also, Andrew, we have, um, we were talking about the Sunday afternoon, this Sunday, uh, it is the 28th of July. We're going to have the the school drive, as they call it. Uh, well, it's going to be a fun day also. We're going to have bouncers. We're going to have uh, popcorn for the kids. You know, it's going to be more for the kids, you know, and they're going to come out and enjoy themselves. And we have some space left over. I encourage the, the public to, to register. Because it's quite a few, but of course you cannot cater to everyone. But it's quite a few, and after the the, the event, you know, you will get a synopsis how much kids was there and how much kids had benefit from the from the um, the whole school bag, etc. But anyway, we have our school bags. So we have two types of school bags. This is one. Uh, it's two different school bags we have. It's two different. I don't know if Pete can catch them. You know, yeah, yeah. Two different. So um, one for the smaller kids. And one for the bigger kids, you know, they have one that is. So it's uh, a good thing, it, like none of them says USM on top of it. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm sure that, you know, some people were thinking, like, ah, oh, he gonna put USM on it or something. No, 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 it's not, uh, it, it doesn't have USM on it. Um, you can just, it's just a school bag, a normal school bag. And this is another one too, a normal school bag. But um, the only difference is that um, one of them, when you see a little better quality than the other, um, because you know when the, the kids go into Milton Peters, 
um, you know, at Milton Peters, you need a, a stronger bag, you know, and the other school, for example, a smaller school, a four-year-old, don't need the same type of bag as a 12, 13-year-old. So that's the difference where we're going to have there in the bags. That was the two bags. And we also have the pencil case, Andrew. You know, we have the pencil case. And we will fill up the pencil case. We don't do everything, but you see, you have a pencil, a little glue. You know, you got two pens. And also, we have a eraser. Eraser? <laughs> you got a little eraser. And also, you have a small little, little coloring. Yeah. You know, so it's it's pretty good. Yeah. You know? No, no, it's pretty good yeah. for, for, for know, just, um, it's, uh, it's, it's a good start. It's kids. a good start, yeah. And it helps, it helps definitely. also, yeah, it helps. And I would parents. like to thank um, the sponsors, definitely, Andrew, I would like to thank the sponsors. I don't want to mention the name because some of them was a little boy. They don't really want to be in the political star, yeah. <laughs> right, you know. But um, I thank them because they truly uh, supported the cause, the cause, and um, I appreciate the, the love and and that all the ones that's going to benefit from this, this, this cause. Sunday, what time? So Sunday is going to be 4 o'clock. Uh, we start 4 o'clock and uh, we finish 7 o'clock. And why you choose Belvedere? Why Belvedere? You know, um, Andrew, I started here in Soccer Garden. Um, I lived in Soccer Garden also, you know. Um, but um, I did a lot of stuff in Soccer Garden. But I decided, you know, let's go in another neighborhood. And um, the first one that came up was uh, me and my team sat down. We said, let me go Belvedere. And, but everybody is welcome, huh? not only people from Belvedere. And to be honest with you, we have several people that sign up. Eh? We have people from St. Peter's, French Quarter, Cold Bay, Guana Bay. All over, people sign up. Sign so, up and, yeah. uh, and all they have to do is um, just look for the number. Look for the phone them. number. Yeah. You know, people going to put it up just now. Yeah. Put the number and they will see the phone number, everything. They WhatsApp the message. Just WhatsApp the message. You know, we have a few spaces left. You know, WhatsApp the message and... Um, once we reply and add you, make sure come and you have to be registered. That's one thing you have to be registered. And if you're not registered, you come. And at the end of the event, let's say, for example, some people didn't come and we have left bags, you know, you will get because maybe not everybody can see the ad. approximately how many persons um, are going to uh, benefit. So how many? No, that, that you will so, know after. So, so, that, so, that, so. that that you will know. Sound after. like a politician already? But yeah, I know. I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to divert that. But after you will. But it's a quite quite a bit. Quite a bit. It'll be it'll be fun and nice for the kids. Trust me. No, of course it would be remiss of me of um, you know especially um, me being late night. Um, not talk about uh, you know the um, celebration by the minister of Rami yesterday during the Council of Ministers press briefing, where he said that um, Country St. Martin um, came out victorious against you um, and your business partner with the business that uh, was dem dem demolished, dem demolished uh, last year um, at the the airport uh, boulevard side. So maybe you could um, dive a little bit into that, um, how, your reaction to that court case and of course the ministers, um, you know, divulging that uh, at uh, the Council of Ministers press briefing. Um, you know, Andrew, to be honest with you, um, I don't want to go too much in that because I don't want to focus on the minister and his bacchanal. Um, but again, you know what's so strange about this whole thing? When you see, I think you was in the press briefing, and they asked the Minister of Finance, what about the one million giller that they had to pay? For bearing point. Yeah, for yeah. bearing point. And that was, that well was not the end. That well was, yeah, we're paying it, but we still, it's ongoing, right? Yes, it's so ongoing. So it's a, it's a, so it's they a, can't divulge They can't divulge it. Yeah. But my case, well, is not an ongoing one. It's no, done. It finished. Finished. Andrew, my case yeah. is still an ongoing case. Um, as, I, as I explained, I was on Wendell Moore yesterday, a couple of days ago. Um, it's an ongoing case, and we was in a uh, the judge sent us to another court case, but to another court which is Bustus left. But that's a whole different thing. It's an ongoing case. That's all I can tell you. It's an ongoing case, and um, I'm not going to back off. And um, it's it's ongoing, and we will continue to do what we have to do, and the law will continue. My lawyer will continue doing what he has to do, and at a certain point, indeed, if we lose, we lose. But again, now we have not reached to the end. And it's so it's so funny, right, uh, Andrew? I was a partner of the person who is on the business license, um, and the minister is actually enjoying smirking, you know, after demolishing a, a local person business because the person who works with me also is a local person, and the minister doesn't even realize that 
how much people have lost their bread um, after they're tearing down that building. And it, it's so funny how they talk about uh, the, the for progress and, and what type of progress. Um, Angel, let me tell you, when that situation was ongoing, there was different, uh, let me tell you, politicians, which was people within the NA camp, within the up camp, approached me, which we, we talked about the whole situation. And um, they tried to avoid um, the preaching to the worst. Yeah. And the minister, you know, he want to show his, you know, you could see that, uh, ego. And um, he wants to show that he's the minister, which is okay. And he did what he had to do. And I, I respect his decision. And, um, you know, so it has a road to go. Yes, have a road to it go. It has a road to go. And if you decide that's the road you want to go and you want to show your muscles and you want to be happy after breaking down somebody's place, costing them a lot of money just because the judge had ruled something for you, you feel contented. I, I wish him the best in his career. And that's I, that's why I want, Andrew, to be honest with you, I want the people of St. Martin to really look um, um, with all the respect what kind of demons have been created in this country and who we have in power and what kind of people do we have in power. Andrew, I, I, I am, I've been in St. Martin now. I came back. I was born here when Curso come back. Been doing business here. The struggles we've been going through. Um, I'd like to show you a document here. This is a billing permit which I had in, in the permit department from 2009. You know, the name is not, actually me is not really important, right? And they reacted to me after four years. Now that election is coming, they reacted on my billing permit, telling me, yeah, you gotta fix this, fix this, after four years. Um, so you can imagine there's more individuals going through this, applying for billing permits, and when election is closed, these ministers or minister will want to decide to answer you, because of course they're gonna answer you election time, so then you can't say why they didn't answer you. You understand? Because when you go at them now, they will say, no, no, but I answer you. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and it's, it's remarkable how government which is supposed to be a serious entity, does play in these games, you know. And when you, when you see the, the press release on government's page, I was like, whoa, you know, they were talking, yeah, relax this day, relax this that. As if I am a criminal, I tried to kill somebody. Um, I, I'm just a regular person, Andrew, yeah. that's doing business in St. Martin, just like every other regular person, every other St. Martin or every other Indian, Chinese, who come from abroad wants to do business. Mm -hmm. With all due respect to everybody, because everybody deserves to open a business, can open a business and go apply for one. Yeah. You understand? So it's nothing different. I never steal, not a thief, not a fraud neither. And I'm not looking to do that neither. Um, I put my life on a pause to, to join the race because, because of these abusements and what is happening uh, within this country. And I just hope, you know, the people of St. Martin can see, you know, when the minister enjoyed that and he was laughing as if it was something fun, you know, yeah. <laughs> even, even after seeing your... Yeah. No, no, because I was like celebrating the fact that he broke down a, a local business and then say, you know, you have to do things the right way. When um, last week during the press briefing, when he was asked about the, the underwater museum on the business that's supposed to be... Uh, he can't divulge who was it, right? He can't divulge who, but it's public, <laughs> so but he decides not he, to. He, uh, yeah, but now he decides to mention it. Julian Rollins. Of course, politics, you yeah. know. You yeah. know, he's playing his politics and I leave him do his thing. He deserves to do his, yeah. his thing. That's why... Um, yeah, but I don't like flip-floppers. Yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. I, That's I why I had to ask about, you, you know, know they, they, being you know, targeted Andrew, like that. you got to understand one thing, you know. Um, I want to go in there to do my best for the, for the people of this country. And I'm sure a lot of um, them started well and they want to stay in power. It's all about staying in power now. It's, uh, I think the focus has changed, you know. So let's see, um, again, let's see what the people of St. Martin is going to, to do. And the, the, the time will come that they will show the, to the, in the polls that if they really want this government to stay or they will change. All right, Julian Rolox. Uh, Junior, we are at his headquarters on Sunday, this Sunday, the 30th, right? Yes, the 30th, yeah. Belvedere, Belvedere um, Playground. So Belvedere that, Playground. Yeah. So once you come in Belvedere and you, uh, you pass the housing foundation on the right, you make a left and then you will get the, the playground, definitely. Okay, make sure you're there, um, register your kids and um, yes, get some nice free 
um, um, school supplies. At least it's a good start. Yeah, definitely. And, and then you can add on with your own, you know, little by little until um, the school year starts. So, all right. Thank you so much. Andrew, so. thank you so much. Um, I appreciate it. Oh, did I say the composition book too? No, I, no, didn't, I didn't say. Yeah, look at yeah. the composition book. Look at the composition book too. You see? So, yeah, they got the book also. So, it's a good start. Andrew, thank you once again. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for having me. Always, always, always. All right, let's continue the show. Take a chip, take a chip, take a chip, take a chip now. <laughs> shake it, shake it. Young DJ Blaze, run and tell them I said we are the sound them selectors play. Every day, making you sway. Yeah. And when the girl them tell it, le, and shadow dingo, le, DJ Blaze, what you say? We are the sound of soccer. All my fans in St. Martin, same old thing. Mob Vini, don't forget, Kai will be in St. Martin exactly on August 4th. Le 4 août, Kai St. Martin, Mob Vini, don't forget, Kai will be in St. Martin exactly on August 4th. Le 4 août, Kai St. Martin, Mob Vini, don't forget, Kai will be in St. Martin exactly on August 4th. At SXM, we're taking travel and tourism to new heights. Here we boast spacious check in areas, 10 passport control points comfortable departure lounges, and an exciting new airport mall. Finally, there's an airport in the Caribbean that takes your travel plans as seriously as you do. Princess Juliana International Airport. The experience will move you. I am Rolando Bryson, Member of Parliament and Leader of the United People's Party. On behalf of the Deputy Leader Omar Otley, the Board of the United People's Party and our entire membership, it is my pleasure to invite you to the upcoming United People's Party Congress on August 13th at the Elise Convention Center in Madame Estate from 5 p.m. At this Congress, we will review the hard work and accomplishments of the United People's Party both in the Parliament and the Government. We will introduce you to our new logo, our new social media and website and also to our new candidates and hear from our existing candidates about our plans for the upcoming parliamentary elections in 2024. We'll also have keynote speakers that will deliver the message of hard work and inclusion that the United People's Party stands for. Remember, we are your representatives and this is your home, your party, your United People's Party. So we look forward to having you with us at the United People's Party Congress on August 13th at the Alice Convention Center in Madame State from 5 p.m. where we tell you how and why we still going up. When the ping pong say boom and the bass drum say boom coming down the road with our smile When we feel it Hello, Sid Martin. My name is Julia Roland Jr. Calling one and all to join us at our back to school event hosted by yours truly, URSM candidate Julian Rolock Jr. on July 30th, 2023 at the Belvedere Playground from 4 to 7 p.m. School supplies will be distributed for the less fortunate children. To register your child, WhatsApp 554-8078. All children 8 years and older will have a chance to enter the raffle for a laptop. Bouncers and popcorn will also be available. Julian Rolock Jr. would like to thank all sponsors that help support it this cause. data just ran out. Here, you can use my phone. Thank you. Come on, man. My data finished again. 
Relax, honey. You can always use mine. Wait, how come you always have so much data? I told you I switched to Telem mobile postpaid plans. Those plans come with plenty of data, so I will never run out of data again. Okay, well why don't you come over here and show me more about these plans? Because I'm about to switch to Telem data now. Welcome to the Late Night Show. Hope everything is okay today on the show. We have a lot in store. But, how you say it in, um, I think Dominican slang is, Papa me! Papa me! Papa me! Today I went to the Council of Ministers press briefing. I sat down like a good little boy. I had my notepad ready in my head because I don't really like the waste paper. And then, all of a sudden, the Minister of Justice appears. And he looks like really upset. And I don't understand why he's upset. But the Minister of Justice addressed the Fernando Clark situation. This is the clip. Need to address the issue of Mr. Fernando Clark, who was summoned to retract his factually incorrect, slanderous, and defamatory remarks about my person. And briefly put, he spoke about sexual harassment allegedly leading to his dismissal. His remarks were clearly geared at the Minister of Justice, which function was held by my person during his dismissal. In reaction to my summons, and foremost, retract his statements, and secondly, to confirm in writing that he would refrain from making further incorrect, slanderous, and defamatory statements, Mr. Clark informed my lawyer yesterday that he had no proof, no evidence, and no witnesses to substantiate what he claimed. And therefore, he have decided to desist from making future statements publicly or otherwise. He also indicated that he never mentioned my name or the client's name or any other name for that matter. And he also therefore thinks that there's no responsibility for any monetary losses resulting from this matter. Mr. Clark hereby come complied with the second part of my summons, which was to refrain in confirming writing that he would refrain from making further publications or making any other remarks in this matter. His reaction, however, does not entail a retraction, and I will consequently pursue this matter in court, and I will see him there. Thank you. Minister De Weaver, considering Mr. Clark's um, accusation, so is it, are you saying that um as far as the dismissal of Mr. Clark, what exactly was the reason for his dismissal then? The same indiscretion or lack of remorse that Mr. Clark is displaying now is the same reason he was dismissed. Secondly, I would expect a lot more from the media houses as well as radio programs who have a responsibility to inform the public truthfully and honestly and not just take any press release and run with it. So, you see, he said, um, whatever is happening is happening. All right, no problem. What was interesting is that after the press briefing, I did talking to the prime minister about something for my job. Because this is just one of my jobs. I also work for the Daily Herald. So I was asking him, I was asking the, the prime minister Daily Herald questions. So I was there writing down getting the information from the Prime Minister. All of a sudden, I see the Minister of Justice saying, only talk to real journalists. Don't talk to the fake ones. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, all right. I let that go. I ain't say nothing. I said, let me let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me let it slide. Let me let it slide. Because, you know, he's upset. But I don't understand why the Minister is upset. Because I'm just basically showcasing what is happening in this wonderful island. And if Fernando Clark came out with the statement, I just tell everybody that the statement is here. Like, how can you just blame me for that craziness? You understand? But no, that wasn't enough for the minister. The minister continued trying to attack me during the Council of Ministers press briefing. Well, it should be after, because he rushed me. And thank God for Stuart Johnson. And also... Thank God for Leona Marlin, the Prime Minister, for holding back the Minister of Justice for coming after me. So you know what I did? 
instead of you know putting up my fists because right now I would be in I would be in jail. You know what I did? I take out my phone and say, "World star, come now, come now, Connie, we we doing come now." You don't believe me? Here's a video. <laughs> Andrew, Andrew. But why are you Andrew. watching me so? Andrew, stop. Andrew, and, so? and listen to me. Andrew, stop. I'm listen. Behave my God. Now, while the minister was rushing at me, I was able to find something that fall out of his pocket. Now I understand exactly what he was coming to do. He was coming to me to put this on me because he wanted to stifle me. He wanted to get me quiet. So this is what he wanted to put on me. Um, so I can't clock. Uh-huh. This one wants to go. Let me... Why do I like it? Anyway, listen. Politicians. You have a responsibility to the public. I just... go based on the information you give to us. And, of course, if you are in the public light, then I will make sure highlight this every time. So, you can't scare me. You know that. You can't scare me. Touch me. Touch me. Touch me. Good evening and welcome to Days of Our Lives, St. Martin edition. I <laughs> uh, hope everything is okay with you. I hope you had a good weekend. I'm sure um, you get a chance to relax and um, start the, the week fresh. Now, last week in Parliament, yes, I didn't forget because I tried to cover most of the important parliaments, but this Parliament sessions, now, but this particular meeting was the best meeting I've ever seen in the history since Parliament became Parliament. So this was the best meeting ever. What am I speaking about? On Friday, the members of Parliament decided to have a 20-minute back and forth about who is allowed to use to project the projector in Parliament. I think the debating styles of these members of Parliament are just amazing. So I'm going to borrow some of Mr. Brown's music and I'm going to share some of the highlight of the projector meeting that actually had to do with the Minister, um, Minister Lee and of course the uh, SZV, the buckle, but we'll get to that when we come back. Take a look. And I would like to know what is the procedure on using the projectors in Parliament? I believe that as a member of Parliament, I should be able to and have permission to use a projector when I want to explain certain things and make certain things uh, more <clears throat> easier for the public to understand, and I don't believe that I have to ask permission from another MP to use a projector. We all are 15, 15 elected MPs in here, and um, I think that it's kind of ridiculous now on the way certain procedures are being handled here in Parliament, and I would like an update as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, MP Irion. You realize that... Um, <clears throat> These points that you've made are not really notifications, but are actually points of uh, questions and that. Point, point, MB, of, point of your order, Mr. Chairman. Yes, MB, Irion. Um, I would also like to notify you that the chair also, during my meeting, um, already established the fact that there's no real, there's no real, um, how to say this, uh, protocol when it comes to point of points of notification. So, in fact, Based on what she said, you are then basically wrong. You can have as many updates as you want, um, but I am chair of the meeting now. So there are different chairs, 
different rules as well. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Look. Mr. Chairman, my, my, my colleague, the Honorable Member, Mr. Artwell, raised a point earlier concerning the projection and the use of it. And in my remembering before, I used the projection on many occasions without having to ask permission to use it. And you went on, Mr. Chairman, to say that's a different chair in terms of what is being used in notification. But since I'm raising it a point of order, but you didn't answer the Honourable Member in terms of what is the use for one member of parliament being able to use. Is there a request for the use of the projector in this meeting? It doesn't matter which meeting it, it, it is for, for Mr. Chairman, it, but it, it he, does matter. an answer should the, be given whether or not it can be used. There is a, um, a protocol at least for every meeting. If you want to do something, then you should ask for it in this meeting. Is there a request for the use of the projector in this meeting? And then it would have to be up to the parliament members to be able to vote on that yes or no. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, probably as the meeting go along, mayhaps, perhaps, I may want to use it. So I can't think on using it right now, but probably if something come to mind, I may want to use it as we go along in the meeting. So that's what I'm saying. What is the protocol of? Well, when it comes to that time, then we will deal with it then. Thank you, MP Christopher Emanuel. Point of order, Mr. <clears throat> Chairman. Yes, MP Irion. I believe in about a half an hour, I'd like to use a the projector. <laughs> In a half an hour, you're going to need to use a projector. Then um, you know that that is, uh, I will bring it to the floor of the members of the committee to be able to vote on the use of you using the projector. Point of order, Mr. Chairman, point of order. I don't see why it have to come to a vote. I am not here on your invitation, Mr. Chairman. I'm here basically because the people of St. Martin voted each and every one of us here into Parliament. We are equal. Why must it come to a vote for a member of Parliament have to use the projection? Come to a vote by whom? But because we are all equal in here. If, if there's something that in use, why should it come to a vote for that? But you, you believe... Um MP Christopher Emanuel, that there is certain ways that you want to use the projector. It should have been known before the meeting so that at least we would have been able to get projector and everything ready and the presentation because there are also other members in parliament. There are guests that are here as well. And I think that we've been able to deliberate this matter quite extensively. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, you cannot speak for the member of parliament. You don't know how far he is already in wanting to use a projection if he had already spoken to the IT individual, if he already had his slides up and running, you, you, you cannot sit on the chair and decide that it should be done already because you don't know what is done from what is not, Mr. Chairman. If you can provide me that a request for this meeting, for this meeting, this Central Committee meeting, which has as an agenda point the current financial status of the SRV and the revenue losses since the passing of Hurricanes Irma, and Maria, Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Me. Let me finish as well, um, um, Member of Parliament. I have given you the floor as well, but now okay. you have to let me finish. My apologies. If a letter has been received or to the Secretariat that a request for the use of the projector for this meeting is here, then I believe that we should debate this point. But I have not, at this point in time, not received any request or notifi notification excuse me, from um, the Khrafiya next to me of a request for a projector in this meeting. Point of order, Mr. Chairman, that is exactly my point. I don't have to provide you with no request. That's, that's what I'm asking. What is the protocol? How does it work? Because it can't be that every time a member of parliament wants to use something on the floor of parliament, they have to ask another member of parliament. That's the point that I'm making. As much as I respect the position of the chair, Mr. Chairman, but we are all equal members of parliament here. That's where the question is asked. What is the use and what is the protocol of such? Okay, so now let's get back to the meat of the matter. Now, what could be the reason why the chair of parliament, meaning not um, in this in this in this instance, not um, Theo Haleger, but Sarah Westford Williams, why didn't she want a member of parliament to use the projector? Now, from what I understand is because one of the members of parliament in his presentation would have used a picture that was used in the media um, during a groundbreaking ceremony of the hospital, the general hospital, 
forcing Martin. And in that picture, um, we're not going to show it because uh, we don't have permission to show it by the chairperson of um, Parliament, Sarah Westcott Williams. We don't have permission to show it, so we're not going to show that picture. Hey, yeah! I just said we're not going to show it! Stop that! <laughs> I don't need a projector, I can just like put it there, like, look. <laughs> okay, so what's the big deal? Um, so one of the members of parliament would have shown uh, the picture with the minister and SZV and everybody, the groundbreaking, and you're seeing the son of the chair lady of parliament, Andy Westcott, in the picture. So I guess she did, just didn't want that to, to be um, said in parliament. I don't know why. But this is the picture. I don't know what's the big deal. Andy Westcott is a businessman. Oh, you stop that man. So what that his mother is president of parliament and part of the governing coalition and Emil Lee came from the DP party, which actually is supposed to be DP owned and Sarah controls that. So what? What's wrong with all you? Just a little picture. Take it easy. Back for our interview segment, and um, you gotta relax now. You gotta like relax so in the chair. Yeah, yeah, I can relax. It's just late night, man. You gotta be proper <laughs> here now. Yes, you see the smile. That's what you want. Our uh, Minister of Justice, um, I call him the tallest Minister of Justice in St. Martin. Um, in history? In history. <laughs> in history. Of St. Martin. In St. Martin, yeah. yeah. Um, now, I always get your name wrong. Do you notice? Yeah, I don't know why. Because, <clears throat> for some reason, Sherendi is one, and then I have the Doran, then I have the York, and then one, one time I call you Martina even. Like, I was, like, so wrong. So, his full name is... This, this is where the party is supposed to come in and say, my full name is... Egbert Jurendi Durand. Egbert, yeah, and Egbert is why it's always yeah, like... that's the first name. Egbert Jurendi Durand. Which one you like, though? It is whatever. It's whatever. Because if um, last election I had a serious job in marketing my first name because everybody knew me as Jurendi. Yeah, sure. So yeah, that's why I did. So I had to add the Egbert Jurendi. So they don't end up seeing Egbert and looking for Jurendi. Uh, On the <laughs> so, so seeing Egbert and wondering who that is. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then and, uh, the York. Where did the York come from? My mom is a York. And my father is Durant. So that's why. That's why. Yeah, that's why. That's why. Okay. So, but so I know that that's clear. Yeah, I'll call you just Egbert. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, Minister yeah, of Justice, good. how the job going so far? All right, job going good. Um, challenging, of course, but um, I knew what I signed up for, and yeah. we we going with it, man. We rolling. We progressing, and we progressing. Definitely going in the in the right direction. Now, um, one thing I like is that um, you know when you was a member of Parliament, um, you saw how uh, my show particularly. Would focus on the government itself for anything to see. <laughs> now that the tables turn, of course, I on you like white rice <laughs> too, yeah. which you know, of course. you got a job to do. I got a job to do. So, um, uh, how was the how how was the adjustment though from a member of parliament um, having to always having to answer a question and answer a question, question, answer question, and now Minister of Justice now. You know, you have to work, yeah, so a, you can't always switch. answer. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a switch. It's a, yeah, the switch is off from offense to defense. Yeah. Yes. How, how, how was the adjustment, or are you still making the adjustment? Well, to be honest, we didn't have much time to really learn on the job or trade or anything like that. And we went straight into to work one time, um, even though normally after you swear in, there's a ceremony, yeah. which um, we canceled and went straight into work, went straight into meetings with the airport in order to deal with some real um, pressing issues and we hit the ground running all right issues before you go into again election yes issues um outstanding issues for the justice ministry not something you created something you inherited of course we know this definitely but at the same time like you always say you're responsible it's your ultimate I responsibility always I, always say I know you I, say, I say it might be not be my fault but it is my problem and it is my issue to deal with. Yeah. I don't shy away from that for sure. Uh, justice workers, when are they getting paid? They're getting paid very soon. Very soon. You're working on it? If I work it on it. I've been working on it. Um, I would say that's... Um, what, what's the hold up though? The hold up was that um, the former minister 
signed the MOU, but did not just sign the MOU. Yeah. Say, hey, this has to be done. This has to be done. But did not specify or go into any details in terms of a legal basis. How are we going to do it? Mm -hmm. So now, um, I initially I was I found it very strange because speaking to different people within the ministry, everybody was like, we don't know what he signed. Everybody was was you know running behind the fact that they didn't know what he signed, mm -hmm. and um, we come to realize that there was no legal basis for anything, and um, we had to put that together along me along with the minister of finance, and we've been working on it ever since. I even got a hundred page memo so to speak from my staff in order because we had to do a lot of research and a lot of documentation as to how we got here, was the reason for this, where it stopped, where it stuck, where it progressed, and all those different things. So I um, have to shout out the staff definitely for a lot of late nights and early mornings. And um, we were able to be, come to an um, understanding as to why we are where we are. And then now not only the problem, but a solution moving forward. So um, right now it's in the, I, don't, I, hate, I always hate to use the word final stages because um, <laughs> the people might get a misconception because the last government always used to use the word final stages, yes. pipeline and all those different things. But or soon. Or soon. Yeah. I could tell you for sure um, from Durandi Duran, it is in the final stages. It's just a matter of fine tuning. And um, I, I say this, huh? I am not going to um, affix my signature to something without any legal basis because um, it clearly stipulates that you will be personally held liable. And one thing in this, and I say this very straight up in all my meetings that I still have right now and I try to protect it is my integrity and my credibility because a lot of um, people are running for office or whether in wherever capacity they are they don't have much credibility and once you lose your credibility it, 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 it damages you on a whole and integrity is something I mean it speaks for itself so once you could keep those two things intact moving forward and I definitely am not going to damage any one of those things based on a promise that somebody else made without substantiating how they were planning to do something. But I can guarantee you that it has my full attention, which they know. And um, I met with the unions. Um, we had um, the unions approve the, um, the draft last week. The, they had calling back and forth to get the, um, the KOA, which is the, well, the CCSU, which is the union for the unions. Yeah. Um, to uh, to come out of their vacation and so forth, which I really appreciate. They took time out to come out to approve it. Yeah. So now it's going into the one more stage and then to the Council of Ministers and then it's finalized. While all of that is going on though, this is just one of many issues, issues correct, in the Justice correct, Ministry correct, correct. because I don't think people have an idea um, of how broad the ministry is. How broad? It's the biggest ministry. Yeah, it's 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 uh you know people it's it's a reason why you don't have any other responsibilities with yes, exactly. it's just justice. Um, our mm -hmm. relations with the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. How 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 is that come? Because people had a tendency of thinking that when you come in, because you were so critical of um, the previous government and the way they dealt with certain things agree to certain things mm -hmm. um, haphazardly yeah. now that you were in that position um, how's the relationship going so far with well, our Dutch with our Dutch um, well, I should say with our mother <laughs> no, 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 no. our mother country no, no you don't want to call no, on that no, no, no. okay our partner our partner within the kingdom I like that okay yeah. yes how's that um, going well so far we had one video conference I mean one of the main topics will, is the prison and the capacity and different things yeah so we went into that but um, my stance being critical, uh, I would like to say more being pro Martin because it's, it's a lot of ways to twist different things. And even um, I had a former minister say that um, we are against the Dutch. And I said, no, I'm not against the Dutch. I'm not against Curacao. I'm not against Aruba. I'm not against Suriname. Nobody. But I am for St. Martin because I was elected here. So therefore, the interest of St. Martin, the best interest of the people of St. Martin should always come first. So if that means I'm critical, then, then if whatever term you choose to use, then yeah. so be it. Mm -hmm. But I am pro here because I was elected here to represent the people here. And it's, it's been in the oath when you're taking the oath. So that's my stance on it. And regarding the relationship, the relationship is what it is in terms of we have topics that we deal with and we dealt with the topics. We have the, um, the AVO coming up in January. So a few days after the election, I'll be flying to Curacao to deal with that. and. See how it goes from there. Okay.
I, I try to see if you answer it, you know, because it's well, like, I, that will just tell you. So my stance, my stance, it's has fine. Not changed. It's, it's normal. My stance, it's, my stance is why well, I never had a bad relationship before. I mean, it's conception of what people want to make it. That's what I'm saying. Okay. So it's how I you look at it. I understand. I understand. You say, people might say being critical, but I say being prosematic with the points that I brought forward in terms of, like, let's say certain agreements that were signed. I was saying, listen, guys, that's not in our best interest because um, you have a lot of people um, operating here. I leave it at that. That don't answer to nobody here locally. Yeah. Basically. And that was one of my main concerns. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, when you sign off these agreements. You're basically setting the country backwards in terms of autonomy and different things. So those were my um, points, especially within the Ministry of Justice Act, was one of my concerns. Still is my concern. Now, Shirley, how do you deal with pressure? As pressure. in pressure from different sides. I mean, everybody has an agenda. Let's, of course, let's, of course. let's, let's be, <laughs> that's clear. That's clear. Yeah. Everybody has an agenda. And of course, when they, when they, when they try to, to, to have a, a campaign on a particular issue, yeah. you know, the first thing they can do always, the first thing they always run to say is the minister of justice is keeping a blind, um, um, eyes or he's not he's not he, he, he he's focusing more on other stuff and he focuses on the prison but he forgets this you know like for example mm -hmm. um the situation with um the prison yeah it is almost as if people assume that it was your fault when the prison has been a long-standing situation for St. Martin yeah. so pressure how do you handle pressure you don't handle pressure at all because even here now in this damn interview you're not sweating yeah man you see to be honest Andrew once you and I've always been, if you follow my career for the last year, almost two years, yeah. I've been very transparent when it comes to releasing information. So, I mean, sometimes you might, and I said it on the floor of parliament, I'd rather tell the truth and you'd be upset with me than lie to gain political mileage, which is a, a fact. So people will get upset with the truth in terms of, okay, ain't reached yet. Others going to say, yeah, we'll have it for you on the 10th of January and all these nice things. Yeah. So, I mean, it's up to you now as an individual how long you want to be um, fooled by the pe by people and, and in terms of moving forward. So I deal with pressure simple. Tell the truth. And uh, it, it is, it is it a fact that eh? the truth shall set you free. Eh? <laughs> yeah. it's re I sleep good yeah. because... Um, I know I have a clean heart and I try to be as open people. Sometimes they say, yeah, um, for instance, somebody will come to me. Hey, Doran, I have this and this and this and that issue. Others would say, okay, okay, I'm going to look into it. I'm going to tell you, listen, whatever you tell me now, to be honest, when I walk upstairs or move, I might forget it. So for us to avoid anything, just put it in a letter to me and then definitely we'll have a paper trail and you will get a response. So those are different things. In That's a different way. Yeah, That's a different way of, everybody of, gonna listen. of governing. Yeah. I like that. Everybody okay. going to listen. Like, yeah, yeah, okay, no problem. I'm going to fix it. And just <laughs> and then two weeks, three weeks pass, and you really hold it against the person, but they really forget. Yeah. So that means they don't have no intentions of looking into whatever issue that yeah. you bring forward. So I say, listen, you know what? Put it in writing. Adjust it to me, and I will get it, and you will definitely get a response. And yeah. if you see it taking too long, don't hesitate to send a reminder. So that is... Basically, how I've been doing it for the last um, six weeks, eh? yeah, five weeks. Five yeah, six weeks. elections 2020. Yeah. Um, the night of January, you are on the list once again on the National Alliance number five. five. Still the alternative. Still the alternative. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why pick that slogan? Why get even that slogan? The last election, um, I was the, I had my slogan was the yeah. alternative. Yeah. Still the alternative because um, a full term has not been met as yet. And we're still working in progress. So it's still a work in progress in terms of results. And whenever, like let's say for instance, I have my, some of my peers would still be in awe and be like, yo, you make it, you know, like, wow. Yeah, you're a minister. Yeah, 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 you make it. And I say, listen, I maybe was a member of parliament, was a minister, but I still don't feel like I make it. Yeah. Why? Because once I see more of the things that I champion, you see the fruits of it, the results of it, then I would say, hey, I make it. But for now, I would still say it's still a work in progress. We're still pushing. That's, that's my stance and my approach with that's concerned. That's why it's still the alternative. So we're still, we're still pushing. We're still pushing. Now, you had to, you had, you had, you had a chance to, to, to actually live the life of two um, very important positions in St. Martin. You right. have a member of parliament and you have a, a minister. Currently, you're serving as minister, um, and you was a member of parliament two years. Uh, 
fuck up no like 18 months 18, 18 months, months yeah. okay now um having seen it a little bit getting a taste of it at yeah. least if you had to pick which one would you rather <laughs> well to be honest yeah. both of them are unique in their own way yeah. two different functions i would say if you want to let's say have a bit and i'll say a bit so it won't be taken out of context more freedom as a member of parliament the pressure the direct pressure is in there mm -hmm. because you're sort of a supervisory board over the government um to make sure that they are doing what they're supposed to do but now as a minister and especially as a minister of justice but as a, it, it have ministers and they have minister of justice it's correct a, it's a whole separate thing like yes, you said. yes yes it's almost like how <laughs> when you meet people they would like boy girl politician like <laughs> yes, agenda yes, on its own yeah, yeah. I, I realized that during the campaign but yeah, hey, yeah, yeah no hard feelings um yeah. as a minister of justice with all the issues especially from um 10, 10, 10 to now yeah it's it's always going always going somebody even my cousin asked me hey when you have some time i want to speak to you i said listen i don't have time just let me know what you want to talk about and then we, you tell me if it's an urgent thing and then yeah. we, we see how we could deal with it there's no time yeah. um the sacrifices that you make uh, in terms of family and all these things so but hey i know what i sign up for i would say again i, was just about to I say. know what i sign up yeah. for all right that does it for the late night show thank you so much to mr Rolox, and um of course we are very happy that uh, we were able to talk to him i hope you enjoyed the flashbacks of the, um, the late night so um until um next week yeah enjoy your weekend and we are going to do this again another week of um the summer tour and then we should be back in the studio all right good bye trying to get ahead get out the way now move forward stand back now break away i'm about to bring it up never backing down took a step to the floor from a city from a town i do whatever it takes i'm going to get this right oh oh i'm going to go all the way Hi, Mom. How are you? Hi, darling. I'm fine. Just calling to say hi. Oh, okay. We got over here. Girl, I'm here watching this movie and it. But, Mom. You finish all your minutes yet? No, girl. Talem has new postpaid plans and automatically upgraded my postpaid package. Hmm? Is that so? Guess what? I am getting more minutes and almost double the amount of data for the same price. I guess I'm making a switch now. Let me call you back, Mom. Hey, Tash, you have of Talem new postpaid plans? Well, don't make me have to tell you twice. Check your meat out, my rice.